Hey, Flash fans, Dan Griffin with you here. I am being joined by one of the uh, recent greats of uh, Kent State golf fame, and it's Taylor Pendrith. And Taylor, thank you so much for uh, giving us a few moments of your time. First and foremost, uh, congratulations. It's been uh, quite a, a heck of a couple of weeks and a couple of months for you here on the, the Corn Ferry Tour, and then uh, top 25 finish in the U.S. Open. So first and foremost, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. Good chatting with you. Now, top 25 uh, out at Wingfoot, how long are you going to lord that over a couple of your uh, Kent State teammates as being the uh, the top Golden Flash finisher and uh, top Canadian overall? <laughs> well, we played a couple of practice rounds on uh, on Monday and Tuesday, uh, the three of us, so that was, that was pretty fun. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you know, they play on the PGA Tour full time. So I was just up there for, for the one week and um, was able to beat them. So uh, that was pretty, that was pretty cool. But uh, it was, it was a pretty, uh, pretty cool experience just to be there, all three of us and um, something I'll never forget for sure. Well, kind of take us through uh, wing foot. Obviously, one guy finishes under par. You had one of the better rounds on the weekend with an even par 70. Just given your, your professional golf experience, just kind of walk us through as a muni golfer like myself what kind of a daunting task that really is because watching it on uh, on television I don't think does it justice yeah it was by far the hardest golf course I've ever played um you know and the and the conditions were set up super difficult it was the golf course was long it was a par 70 you know it was 7,500 yards so you needed to hit driver the fairways were tight and firm, so they were really difficult to hit. And if you if you miss the fairways, you're in the you know five six inch rough, and really really challenging to get the ball out of the rough with solid contact and hit it where you're uh, intending to. So um, you needed a good short game, and and uh, but even once you got on the greens, they were super slopey and fast. And um, the USGA had some some tricky pins for us, so you had to be. Uh, you had to be very careful, I guess, uh, on some putts um, and just kind of plot your way around the golf course and, and manage it. And, uh, you know, the last round I, I was able to, you know, if I missed the green, I was in a good spot where I could have a, a nice chance of getting it up and down and uh, was able to make a couple birdies and, and a lot of pars, which is uh, a lot of pars are good out there. Um, I think generally at most U.S. Opens, but uh, especially that place, it was uh, it was awesome. But it was it was definitely challenging very very hard so what, what, what would you say has been working for you especially that that last weekend because you put together a, a string of great corn fairy finishes we'll get we'll talk about that here in a second but is it just kind of riding the momentum of playing some really good golf what was working for you yeah I mean I feel like I've been playing some nice golf for the past couple of years really I've just you know had some injuries in the past and um, feeling, feeling good now and everything's kind of clicking, you know, I, I can kind of swing at the ball the way I used to and, and not be afraid to, you know, make contact with the ground and, and hurt myself. And, um, you know, I think mentally I'm in a, a lot better spot as well. Um, just everything's kind of going right. And w once you get a couple good finishes under your belt, you get some confidence. And I think I was just lacking that, you know, I knew my game was good enough and I was just couldn't, didn't have the results yet. And, uh, you know, it was a combination of things, you know, maybe me, me being injured and, um, you know, playing on a lower tour. And so I just embraced it and tried to make my way up through the ranks and the last couple of months, especially after the COVID-19 break have, has, have been really good. Um, you know, I had a month where I, didn't finish outside the top three, which was awesome. And everything was just kind of clicking, you know, I, um, the confidence was there. Mental game was good and, um, was hitting the driver really nicely and, and rolling some putts. So everything was kind of, was kind of clicking. Well, kind of take us through that, that COVID break. We've seen some, some golfers, namely the U S open champion that we've, we've seen what they, what he has been able to do given that time off, kind of take us through what you were able to do kind of, I mean, golf, is a an individual in a mental game as is and being being removed from it and kind of in isolation yourself walk us through what you were able to do whether that be working on your mental game or just individually away from the course or at least away from competition yeah well I'm kind of happy I didn't put on 40 pounds in quarantine but um yeah I didn't I was I was in Canada and uh 
didn't touch a club at all. It was kind of a, a blessing, I think, for me. Um, you know, I had my shoulder had been bugging me the last tournament that we played and um, flew home to Canada to go get it looked at and then uh, flew actually flew back to Florida, turned my phone on and learned that golf was canceled. So I flew back to Canada. And um, yeah, I was able to, to, you know, work on my shoulder and rest it and, and not golf for, for three months. And um, it really helped me, you know, I've <laughs> kind of used to taking breaks, I guess. Uh, you know, even when I was at Kent State, we had that beautiful indoor facility, but it, you know, it wasn't kind of, it wasn't a grind all winter, um, you know, as if you were in the, in the South where the weather was great. But so I enjoy breaks. I've always kind of played well after breaks and took me a little bit to, to kind of get going. Uh, you know, I was a little rusty the first event, but, um, after that, everything, everything clicked and my shoulder was feeling, was feeling a lot better. So, um, just got it stronger and, and feeling good. And, um, the golf followed. Now, what's it like playing with limited to no fans? You just kind of, I, I've seen a lot of golfers that have said that they, they, they don't mind it because it allows them to even more singularly focus. And I've seen guys that say that they miss it because they feed off that energy. Where, where do you kind of lie in that, in that, in that question? Yeah, I'm kind of in the middle. I think, you know, it would be nice to have spectators. You know, I enjoy playing in front of people and it's obviously really nice to have family and friends there. Um, so that part's been kind of hard not having, you know, I haven't seen my family or friends from Canada and since May. Um, and so that's kind of tough, but, um, and my fiance as well, I haven't seen her since May. So it's, it, that's kind of challenging, but, um, at the same time, it is what it is. I'm happy that we're able to play golf. Um, which is great. Um, having no spectators is it, I think it would be nicer with spectators. Just it's more fun, I think for everybody, but, um, some guys enjoy it. Some guys enjoy having no spectators, but I'm kind of used to it, you know, playing, played the McKenzie tour for uh, a couple of years and, you know, they would have some people out there on the weekends, but, uh, for the most part, there's, um, uh, not as big as, of crowds as there is on the PGA tour. So it's, it's comfortable for me. Um, but, it would be nice to have to have fans back for sure. Well, you, you kind of mentioned that you uh, took a, your time away from golf over that time. Was there a show you've been? How did you pass the time if you're if you're in between physical therapy and just staying away from the game? Were you a, a Tiger King guy? Did you did you lose yourself in the Stanley Cup or baseball playoffs or anything like that? What was what was kind of the go the go to 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 pass the time or even now while you're traveling? Yeah, definitely watched Tiger King. Uh, that was like the first week, I think, it was when it came out. So it, I watched it that. Like it came out 10 years ago, and it was like March. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, I watched that, and I don't really have I don't really have an issue doing nothing. You know, I, I don't really get bored, really. So I really didn't do much at all. I would, you know, work on my shoulder, do some home workouts, and maybe go for a run outside, go to the grocery store. And that's basically it. You know, Canada was in – pretty good lockdown during that time so um didn't really do a whole lot other than you know yeah sit on the couch and and uh I can't even remember what shows I was watching but um yeah just Tiger King for sure watch that that was the first, first thing I did but um yeah a lot of a lot of nothing but it was it was nice I really enjoyed having some downtime and uh spending some time with Meg we, we had three months together that we usually don't have and so that was nice and um, so it was just great to get away from the game and, and just kind of relax. Now, let's take you back to your, your time here at a, as a golden as, as a golden flash. Is there a singular round or a singular tournament that kind of sticks out for you? Because that that core group, that three of you, the three of you guys won five, let, let us through five straight team titles. Is there is there any one moment or one shot that kind of sticks out? I think probably the the first time that I won the Mac as an individual was was really cool personal goal for me. Um, you know, it was my first win, and it was uh, it was awesome to to do it at a you know at the conference championships. But I think the number one highlight for my whole time there at Kent was um, when we made it to the um, national championship finals match play. Um, not finals, but we made it to match play, which was first time in, in school history and it was a really cool experience with those guys and uh, it was at Riviera and we beat Florida State in a playoff in the morning and they had some some big names
names on that team. You know, Brooks Kepka was there, Daniel Berger, so some some uh, super talented PGA Tour players. And um, so we beat them in the playoff and got to play Alabama the first round, and they were stacked as well, Justin Thomas. Um, and we ended up losing, but that was, I mean, that was awesome just to be there and to play the underdog role and to take those guys on. And uh, it was a really cool experience that we got to share. You, you mentioned the match play format. Do you do you prefer that style as opposed to the traditional four four rounds of golf? Do you, do you like the that competition aspect where you're just worried about one one individual or one team as opposed to an entire field? Um, I mean that's all that I've known really for the four years that I was there. It was always match play. Um, so I think it's more fun. You know, we don't really as players we don't play match play really ever. So it's uh, makes it exciting and I think you know anything can really happen once you make it there and um, that one year that we did it, it was getting pretty it was getting pretty close because I think Corey was was winning Mac was all square and I was battling back and so Alabama had two points we had a point and there was two available and um, so you know if we had to beat them it would have been a huge upset um, but anything can happen in match play. So I kind of like that format. I think it's pretty cool and it's something that we never really play. So um, it makes it uh, really exciting. Now we mentioned one of the, uh, the, the better moments, whether you're, you're goofing around with, uh, with teammates or friends, is there, is there a shot that you kind of just look back and you, you shake your head about it? Because me, I'm, it's marching orders golf. I, I'm lucky if I can find, I'm lucky if I make it through the same hole with the same ball. Are there, are there a few moments where you just kind of look back and just go, I, I, can't, I can't believe that that happened? <laughs> well, there's one that sticks out. Once you say that, it's, I, it was my freshman year at um, the conference championship. I forget where it was, uh, somewhere in Cincinnati maybe. And um, I was three under par through eight holes and um, hit a tee shot on the ninth hole and then my next shot into the water and then hit five or six more into the water and made a 14. So that was, that was something that uh, I hope never happens again. I don't think it will, but um, yeah, went from leading the tournament to almost dead last in 10 minutes. So it was, uh, and uh, Coach Wakeling was there. He saw every single shot. So it was, uh, it was pretty funny. We still laugh about that. Reminds me of like a tin cup type, type of moment where you just keep asking for the same club and a ball over and over again. It, it, whoop, it, when that kind of when that happens to even the best of us, how do you how do you fight how do you fight through that? Because it, it, at some at some point it just becomes more mental than it is actually your your natural ability. Yeah, sure. I mean, you kind of have to laugh at it. I mean, and now I can really laugh at it, but at the time it sucked, and it was <laughs> you know it was my first Mid American conference championship and I was playing really well as a freshman and was leading the tournament and and helping our team get you know try and win and made a 14 and um yeah Rob Wakeling saw every single shot so it was uh he wasn't too pleased I wasn't too pleased but you know now we can really laugh at it but you just I mean that's all you can do really <laughs> or work on your wedge game <laughs> There you, there you go. Have, how, so. how did you end up finishing out the that that tournament? After, did you were you able to rebound nicely and at least kind of salvage salvage yeah, the tournament? Safer one? Yeah, I think I think I shot eighty one maybe <laughs> with a fourteen, so it wasn't too bad really. And then I shot even par, I think the last two days or something, and and was able to my help my my score helped the team and counted and uh, we ended up winning. So. Um, yeah, it's just something you just got to shake off and laugh about it. And um, that's why you have teammates. You got, you know, four other guys who, who can pick you up. So, Well, an 81 would be the round of my life. So just <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll say that. Now, we'll end on a, on a high note here. Um, is, there a, is there a shot that, that stands out as, as your best? Have you, have you hold out for an albatross? Or have you got a hole, hole in one? Would it really matter? Are there, are there some shots that really kind of stick out to you as, as – um, I'll just use it to have an example. Tom Brady holding out in that in that uh, Monday Night Golf ex exhibition where he was able to salvage the round with that with that kind of performance. Um, yeah, I mean, 
there's not one in particular. I, you know, I did make an albatross on an alumni trip that we that we were on in Arizona, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, those trips are an awesome time. But uh, I'm trying to think of one in a in a tournament. Um, nothing that I can really think of. You know, I made. A, I remember making a really really hard par, grinded out a par on the last hole of the um, stroke play portion to get us into match play. And so that was kind of the first time I really felt nerves and pressure and uh, knew that I needed to make a, a par and uh, I was able to do that. And um, so, I mean, that that's one that I guess that pops into my head and um, just to do it for, for myself and also the team and everybody was rooting for you. And it, so it was uh, very special. All right. Well, well, last question. Where, where, what's next for the next few weeks for you? Where can we, uh, where can we find you on the on the Corn Ferry tour? For those that that don't know, that's the development tour where hopefully, obviously, you played your way into a card. I don't believe they're giving them out, unfortunately, this year. But where can we find you as, as you ride the momentum, hopefully, into into next year and um, and, a, and a spot on the P, on the PGA? Yeah. So, like you said, they're not giving cards out until um, I guess this time next year. Um, but I'm in Savannah, Georgia, just got here this morning. And, um, so playing the corn Ferry tour event here and then next week is in Orlando. Um, and then I'm, I'm off for, for a while, um, planning on going home and, um, you know, maybe try and get in a PJ tour event later in the year, uh, you know, November, December, and, and kind of go from there. We don't start up till, uh, January, I believe on the corn Ferry tour for our, I guess, second year if you want to say but um so i'm looking forward to some time off getting home and um uh, seeing my family and friends and um so it should be a good time but uh once we get going it's uh it'll be a full full year again starting in january so well awesome enjoy savannah i've heard it's a, a really cool town i've never been myself and uh keep hitting them straight i mean top five finishes you've got a good thing rolling here so uh keep up the great work yeah awesome thanks dan